August 24th, 1944. Oh man, I started before you guys got on. Chapter 16, Tidal Wave, August 24th, 1944. Hobie rode back from Mrs. Lee's with mom's groceries down the block. He saw Max, a satchel full of newspapers on his back. Pepper tagged along right next to Max's bike, like Duke used to do. He was too far away for Hobie to call out. In six days, they'd be back in school. In the same classroom, it was going to be a very long year. Hey, Hobie, Catherine Roller skated down the street toward him. We've missed you at baseball games. Hobie braked to a stop. I've been helping my uncle, he exclaimed, on his fishing boat. That sounds fun. Catherine looped around Hobie's bike. Are you working on Saturday? I don't think so. Mom had to, to do back to school shopping. She'd saved enough shoe ration points for new shoes for both Hobie and June. Well, we're getting together for one last game before school starts next week. It'd be great if you could come, Catherine skated backwards on one foot. I'll try, Hobie said. And ask Max, Catherine added. He hasn't been around much either. Well, well, he's got that paper route, Hobie shifted the groceries in his, on his back. Catherine did another turn before skating away. See you Saturday, she called. Mom was getting the mail as Hobie rode up. Anything good, Hobie called. She pulled out a tiny piece of mail. It's from Dad, she said. Hobie ran up the steps. It was a postcard, or a postcarte. Hobie learned another German word. Postcart probably is what it is. Two, Krieg <laughs> Kriegsgefangenen, prisoner of war. That's what the print it was printed across the front of the card. Mom read it to them right away. Dear Ruthie, I am a POW at Stalag Luft 1 in Barth, Germany. This is a camp for officers. Most of us are pilots. I am not hurt and I am being treated fairly. My return address is on the front of this card. Get in touch with the local Red Cross agent and find out the details about sending letters, packages, etc. Tell Hobie I've learned some new jokes. Tell June Bug that I'm learning to whittle and I'm making a friend for Kitty. Don't worry about me. Aim, fly, fight, and write. Love, Palmer. Dad was okay. Hobie had to sit down. He was so relieved. He wasn't hurt and he was with other pilots. Oh, mom said, I need to hear that again. And she read it one more time. Hobie pulled the atlas off the bookshelf. It took a while to find where Barth was. That's pretty far north, mom said. When he showed her, we better add some woolens to dad's first care package. I want to draw him a picture, June said, of me and Kitty. Good idea, mom said. Why don't you work on that while I phone Uncle Trigg? Mom gave June some paper. Then I'll go... Then I'm going to dial up the Red Cross and find out how to get a picture of your to your father. What do you think Daddy's making for Kitty? June asked Hobie. I don't know. Hobie took, Hobie took one of the pieces of paper Mom brought out. He picked up a pencil. He put it back down. It had never been so hard to write a letter to Dad before, but he had never been a prisoner of war before. Dad said he wasn't hurt, but Hobie knew that there were hurts that didn't cause bruises, like, like the mix-up with Max. Hobie picked up the pencil again. Dad was dad, right? No matter where he was or what had happened, that thought gave Hobie the confidence to start writing. Dear dad, I looked in the atlas. Atlas, Barth is almost to Denmark and right on the sea. Mom said it could be cold there in the winter, so she's going to knit you a sweater. Navy blue. She says maybe having that sweater will work like carrying an umbrella so that you won't, so that it won't rain. I am really glad you aren't hurt. Uncle Trigg said that you could land a cardboard box in a hurricane. I feel bad about the Lily Best too, but good that you are safe and with other pilots. That way you have lots to talk about. I love you, Hobie. Uncle Trigg's family came over that night and everyone pitched in to put together a care package. Mom tucked in wool socks and Ellen brought some candy bars and Uncle Trigg threw in several tins of sardines. Emil and Eric added a deck of cards. June drew a picture and Hobie tucked in his best joke book. They got the package taped shut and addressed the way the Red Cross said to. I'll take it to the post office tomorrow, Uncle Trigg offered. I hope he gets it, Mom sighed. It's a long ways from here to there and lots of chances for it to get lost. Or for someone else to take it, added Aunt Ellen. Wait, June jumped up and ran to the kitchen. She came out carrying a bottle of milk. Everyone needs a glass of magic milk, she said, so that Daddy will for sure get this package. Magic milk, Emil snickered. Hobie felt his face get hot. I don't know where she gets these ideas, Mom said, but she helped June bring in the glass for everyone. Make a wish with your first swallow, June commanded. I wish, started Uncle Trigg. No, no, June waved her hand, sloshing a little milk. You can't say your wish out loud. Emil rolled his eyes, but we'll all be making the same wish. 
not out loud, insisted June. Aunt Ellen raised her eyebrow at Emil. Okay, he said. I'm going to make my wish now. He scrunched his eyes tight. He swallowed loudly. There, he said. June watched anxiously as each person drank their magic milk. Then she closed her eyes and drank. She opened her eyes. Now Daddy will get this package. Aunt Ellen wrapped Junebug in a hug. You better believe it, girl. All right, you guys, chapter 17 is next. <laughs>